Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler blog. This blog is about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in us who believe on him and applying this existence to our daily physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. This study, actually, it's not really a study. I would say this blog and post and the subsequent YouTube video is to expose David Bryan and his wife at Glad Tidings Church in California who are transforming and have been transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that the poor captured souls who are being misled by these hirelings, charlatan, fake frauds who are preaching another gospel, teaching another Jesus, putting on a show, transforming themselves who are deceitful workers, Lord, that they be exposed in this late hour, and may those who are under this deception, Lord, may they come out from among them, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we pray even come, Lord Jesus, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, For such are false apostles. <clears throat> Focus on false apostles. They're deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And in verse 15, Paul concludes this thought with, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, I was sent this video, and it's in the link in the blog. In this video, go to the blog link in the description box. It says, blog for this video. All of the associated links and studies are in there. Now, let me say this often. <clears throat> I get comments, emails, and it's really, it gets on, after a while, it becomes very, where I become very tired and weary of people making commentary and they don't even read the links. They have no idea and they start blabbing, shooting their mouth off. I won't answer, do not answer emails or comments where people blab without reading, where they darken counsel with words without knowledge, where they walk in willful ignorance. Run, go away from me. Don't waste my time. Now this video is by this reprobate. His name is David Bryan, and he's a uh, pastor, which really is the CEO of his apostate fake 501c3, I'm sure, but he's got this church operation. He calls a, a building operation. He calls a church, and he and his pious, misguided <clears throat> wife claimed that their ministry, that God gave them a ministry of deliverance, and in this video, it's quite long. I think it's almost an hour. I watched the whole thing. I made myself watch it. They, they actually claim in their testimony that their deliverance ministry actually ended the life of Satanist, the founder of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey. Now, I was, first, I was, 
outraged when someone shared this with me. He's like, check this out. So I'm thinking how, uh, but, but, but anyway, I wasn't even going to bother with it because frankly, I'm <clears throat> working on another study that I hope to come out with here in the next day or so about entering the kingdom, inheriting the kingdom. And there's so much false teaching on that. And I really have found new, more information on it. But the Lord, the Spirit of God, moved and gave me the unction to, it to, first of all, to call this out, to expose it like we're supposed to do. Paul tells us in, in Titus, go there yourself sometime and read in Titus where we're to rebuke them sharply. Uh, Paul tells Titus, he says, let these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And, and he writes in Titus 1, chapter 15, and it says a correction in uh, Titus chapter 1. And you can read that for yourself. And this, this, this scripture came to me. And it says, this witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Now, and, and, and he tells the, uh, Timothy the same thing. He says, preach in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 through 4. He says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not and Endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now this video, when you watch it, it and don't just watch it like, oh, wow, but seriously with a godly humble heart with a king your king james bible go through make notes test the spirits be a good berean and and see what you think but now first of all let's go through this right here okay right off the bat they say that they delivered and and you know what Okay, they say that God gave them a heart to help people that needed deliverance. Okay, there's something to be said about that. The purpose and intent of this video is not to do teaching on how to do deliverance ministry. First of all, many people that get into deliverance ministry, uh, they all, I'm going to say all of them, are a part of or followers of, even tacit followers of the new apostolic reformation movement, like your Bill Johnson's and all the links are in this blog, read them. I came out of this people. I attended the Zusa street revival in Los Angeles in 2006. I remember even as a child growing up with Pentecostal movements and, 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 and seeing my mother being delivered from some, spirit and this this vile filthy old man when i was a young teenager was had my mother's head holding my mother's head and saying we gotta cast out uh and he was and people rolling on the floor i saw this i i, I know what i'm speaking of and then it wasn't until an adult when i really started studying the word of god in the king james bible and i i detest this and I'm calling it out. But they say that they delivered this pathetic woman who was the love child of Anton LaVey, and they basically had violated this young woman so many times to make her Satan's child. But they say that they delivered, it took 10 and a half months delivering and casting out demons and this demon and fighting and fighting for 10 and a half months. Now, shouldn't that send, uh, for even the most feeble-minded, non-Bible-reading so-called Christian, <clears throat> shouldn't that at least get you to question? When Jesus Christ and the apostles cast out demons, they didn't spend 10 months 
of laboring over that project? Now, do I have to read scripture to show you? Read it, study it for yourself. Now, if you're led to watch the whole video, do so. Okay, and the only reason I, I'm posting this is I want this to be a case study to expose frauds in the church. While well, all of your all, hey, you can't say that. Yes, I can. All, A-L-L, -L, of these buildings that call themselves churches, these 501c3 tax exempt, beholden to the government by their tax code, that are run by apostate-trained CEOs called pastors. They're not biblical people. Read my studies. You can take what I say, turn off the video. I could not care less. This is only for the very, very few out there, the remnant. Now, I'm not talking about the remnant of Revelation. That's the Jewish remnant. But the type and shadow is the same. There's very few who really read their King James Bible. And most of these people who call themselves Christians don't even have or believe the King James Bible is the final authority. That's another subject. I've talked about that extensively. But they believe that these church buildings are godly. Now, follow with me in here. If you're misled by false charlatans, hirelings, calling themselves and calling down an apostolic anointing upon, upon themselves, and the apostolic age has ceased, people. Oh, you're a cessationist. Oh, we don't know. No, no, no. We still have gifts. We still have miracles. Now, listen to me. The only spiritual gift that the, that the apostles had was the gift of prophecy, and that gets distorted. Now, we have, during this dispensation of grace in the church age, the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy, there, that we are subject to the prophets, meaning these fake frauds that come up, thus saith the Lord, and you come up, they come up with this bizarre something that's not even scriptural or is outside of scripture or is new revelation, that's of Satan. Everything written in the King James Bible by the prophets, the, what the prophets have stated and close at the end of the last final verse in the last final book of Revelation, that's closed. Nothing will be added to that. The gift of prophecy is only using what the Lord has revealed regarding prophecy to encourage, exhort the saints. Gift of tongues, miracle healings, and raising people from the dead, these things are not in force anymore. Now, are there isolated events of miracles of people being healed? Yes. Are there isolated incidents where people actually experience miracles? The, une the inexplicable? Yes, of course. What I'm talking about is the universal anointing of people saying they're an apostle. They can, walk, they can do miracles. Okay. I want to see the documentation. I want to see actual proof. Just bear with me as we proceed through this video. You'll know what I'm saying. But they never will. The first glaring red flags where sirens should be going is they promote perverted Bible translations, and they quote from perverted Bible translations. They misuse cherry scripture for their purposes, and I will show you what they've done. Now, if you believe, again, I'm going to go back to the King James Bible. We have to have God's word. There has to be a final authority. See the notes below if you're feeble-minded and you think, oh, yeah, no, the NIV is a lot easier. The New Living Translation is a lot easier to understand. No, that's still God's word. No, it's not. Now, Glad Tidings Church, it's in I forgot to say it, the city. It's in Yuba City, California. 
This man, this reprobate is David Bryan and his very pious, soft-spoken, self-righteous wife of his. They sit side by side in their armchairs and they give their very pious, humble testimony of how they took on the gates of hell and prevailed. Let's take a look at this man's church and his doctrine, okay? Let's start there. And I went to their website, and I'm going to write what they say in some key areas. I'm going to make my commentary in red. Then I'm going to move on and strictly go to and address the video of this outrageous account where they took out Anton LaVey. All right? So, as I said, basic, basis, basis, the foundation. They use perverted Bible translations, okay? So in their website, they say Christ, discipleship, and conduct. They say Christians, once saved, need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in water by immersion in the name of the eternal Godhead in order to fulfill the command of Christ. Now, this, and, my, and then they use scripture here that is not applicable. So first of all, the scripture uh, in the dispensation of grace, their water baptism is not required for salvation. Right there tells you they do not understand, they cannot rightly divide the word of truth in accordance to 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. <coughs> they do not, <coughs> excuse me, they're misapplying scripture. So that's a big no-no with these people. Second, they say in their website that the purpose, the last instrument that God is using to extend his kingdom, now, now focus on the words they're using here, to extend his kingdom prior to the second coming of Christ. And, and, and the scriptures they use in Ephesians 3.8, Matthew 6.18, Ephesians 1.20, 22, this is absolutely nothing to do it, they've taken that completely out of context to what they're saying. This is their very, this man and his church, a very perverse and unbiblical practice of dominion theology. This is kingdom dominion theology. <clears throat> the kingdom of God will not come until after the tribulation. We do not have the authority, nor the commission, nor the anointing of the Lord to usher in his kingdom. This is pure demonic. This is only ushering in the Antichrist. I have it in my studies. Please read below. Now, they say autonomy. The local church is completely autonomous. Yeah, okay. That it is a self-governing self-supporting, self-propagating in its mature state. Uh, Acts 13, 1 through 3, yeah, okay, doesn't have anything to do with what he's talking about. But now I am sure, and I was going to spend hours doing the research, but I'm thinking I'm not going to waste time on it. <clears throat> but I am very, very sure that this church and his good old boy and his pious little self-righteous wife are not paying tax on their income they get from their, quote, beloved flock, that they're fleecing the flock for money because they even have it on their website, donate, donate. And um, they, they are 501c3, they're nonprofit. They have a nonprofit status. Well, this shows extreme, <clears throat> and I use the word extreme ignorance. It shows extreme naivety. They're very naive. But I don't believe they're that ignorant. I don't believe they're that naive. I don't believe they're that stupid. I think they're just, they think that their followers, their little sheeple are naive and stupid. So they say these things to make people think, wow, our church is autonomous. Next. They say that every believer in Christ must be subject to God's authority in a specific local church. Yeah, for spiritual protection and long-term fruitfulness. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 
they this scripture does not mean and they quote of course Hebrews 13 17 that doesn't have anything to do with people must be in a brick and mortar apostate building no they just want people to place them in bondage come into our let, let us make merchandise of you finally they go into the healing of the to the believer very aspects of practice the early church you see my notes below I already said the apostolic age ended with the last apostle and disciple that's john these scriptures are not discussing the continuance of the apostolic anointing trust me do your own research they say they empower christians through the gifts of the spirit as enumerated in scripture first corinthians 12 and they're talking chapters 12 through 14 as manifested in the early church. Now, see my previous comment. Additionally, make sure you read 1 Corinthians chapters 12, chapters 13, and 14 for yourself. It never, Paul never writes and tells us that these gifts, first of all, continue and are enumerated and empowered in the dispensation of grace but that they will cease except for the gift of prophecy and we know that that will end at the rapture of the church now this really also upset me they said they are non they are non uh pre-tribulation believers pre-tribulation rapture i'm sorry believers they believe in a post-tribulation rapture now, this is false teaching of the doctrine of devils. See my notes below on the true biblical timeline and that the pre-tribulation rapture of the church is scriptural. But they're telling their people, now we're going to go into tribulation. This is how blind they are. This is how stupid they are. And the reason... I believe, and I want to stop, go back here. I, the reason I believe that David Bryan and his self-righteous wife at Glad Tidings Church in Yuba City, California, I believe the reason they cannot, they do not see the truth and they have all these lies is because the truth is not in them. If the truth was in them, as John writes in chapter 8 42 through 47 when jesus christ addressed the pharisees they would know the truth but see just as their father satan who was a murderer from the beginning who knew not the truth they follow after their king daddy so let's continue here Oh, also, in their website, they have this thing about once a month or a quarter or something. They have the Bethesda Healing Well. I would love to see documentation on the miracles that happen in that healing well. Oh, yeah. It's another scam, people. Let's continue. So they say that on Halloween in 1997, Anton LaVey died from, it started with a uh, heart coronary, heart issue that became, I guess he had a major heart attack and he dropped dead right there on Halloween night because this Brian, David Bryan had basically took him on in the spirit world and Anton LaVey died right there on the spot. Well, there's a big controversy because family members of LaVey said that he died the 29th, but they left the death certificate as October 31st because of Halloween. Now you can research that for yourself. I spent about 20 minutes looking at it. So there's controversy there. And I think this Halloween thing is what I need to talk about now next. You see, Halloween has always been lifted up as the high, the high cult day for the Church of Satan. Uh, and that Halloween is the most evil of all evil days that we could ever imagine. And, but if we really look at it as mature Christians, Halloween 
is spiritually meaningless. And I think it's just a mass marketed tradition of that for Satan and his, his minions, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, demons love notoriety. They love and seek after attention. Satan, because he's a incredible megalomaniac, absorbed, self-absorbed as when he was Lucifer, was cast out for his pride. They love the attention they get on Halloween. But a quote that I want to make here, a former Satanist, he says, I thank God for Halloween because when he really looked at it, he went back and said, wow, they have held Halloween as the most sacred, unholy, satanic day. But Satan, trust me, is no more active on Halloween than any other day of the year. In fact, he does most of his work on Sundays in churches. And I'm going to talk about that. But what happens is people are dominated by fear. Oh, I can't go out. It's evil out there. Okay, so it's super. Halloween has always been super hyped and marketed because of filthy lucre. People make millions of dollars on it. Now, these demons love the attention. But the truth is, and I've written about this before, that if you go, and I want to make a key note here, if you read Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, very slowly, very carefully, and make sure you understand its full meaning in the context, and I repeat, in the context, any holiday. This includes new moon celebrations. Do you know, for those of you who are not well-read and do not understand things, that all moon si uh, periods and cycle changing of the moon of the season were harvest observances given by God? These have all been hijacked by Satan and his children. Let me repeat this. Every harvest moon phase of the moon are different harvests. They were held as holidays or holy days to be observed. Satan has hijacked these days. So did Satan's church, the Vatican. You re I have the link here. I want you to study this. So Paul tells us, let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect to of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now, if my family or my friends and I are saying, hey, we're getting together, da 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 oh my God, no, we can't. That's Halloween. That's an evil day. That is that is honoring Satan when people believe that. It's a normal any other day. Why would I live in fear and terror and say, oh, it's Satan's day, that's Satan's day? No, no day belongs to Satan. <clears throat> no day belongs to Satan, just like that new moon harvest fest when the har when the moon changes to the harvest season from the vernal equinox into the uh, fall equinox. Uh, we are not slaves of superstition unto being bound by Satan in that. I attended churches down in the deep south where relatives of mine would on a change of the moon cycle going into the vernal equinox would say, if a dog <clears throat> howls at the moon on that night, don't dare walk out of your home the next day because that's a Satan marked day. Or, the, or, or something like, okay, Satan marked meaning you got the devil roaming. Now, if you can't see that, is extreme superstition and terror. When demons and devils in their little mass running around are getting all the joy and attention, but really behind the mask, what the true satanic high ritual is, you want to talk about the real high ritual? Forget Halloween. 
It's just a moon cycle. Let's talk about the sun, the sun god. All ancient pagan satanic worship is based on sooner, mostly solar, some lunar, but mostly solar events and Baal worship. The queen of heaven and sun worship. This is the false church. I'm going to repeat. This is the false church. Church building. Think church building. Think religion. This is where Satan really does his work. People are running from the little uh, day, one day, <clears throat> little insignificant day called Halloween. Run from it. Stay away from it. But they'll run to their Catholic church or their Baptist church or their Methodist church and feel that they are in the safe protection in the arms of their Lord. When, in reality, if you study that the Queen of Heaven <clears throat> and the Sun worship, the Church of the Vatican, the very seat of Satan, I have a link here. I urge you to study it about the grand sign exposed on the sun and Baal worship. This is the true basis for Halloween, if you want to know the truth. It was by the Catholic Church and religion. All Saints Day. Do your research. Again, a harvest. If you want to celebrate, hey, we're celebrating the harvest time. We're having friends together, whatever, or summer, or hey, June 15th is our celebration day. Don't get hung up on dates with superstition. I lived around superstitious people. I lived many years in foreign countries. I've been down in South America and Central America. I've been in Europe and Spain. I've been, I lived in Vietnam for many years. I see how pagan religions and superstition keep people in continual bondage and fear. I worked with an Indian. I saw how India would have certain days and they were having a certain observance holy day every time you turned around don't dare do this do this do this do this people all religion i repeat all religion including the church of satan yes including your catholic church including any church operation that has creeds, religious dogma, creeds, doctrine of man, calling it biblical and it's not, including your local 501c3 Baptist building operation, you must look at this and see this is really where Satan does most of his work. Now, I am not at liberty to discuss what the Lord has put on my heart to reveal here about Protestant churches being fully now under the auspices control of the ecumenical movement. The Vatican has infiltrated the Church of England. You saw what happened at King Charles III's coronation, which is a mockery when he's supposed to be the defender of the faith, but it, now it's all faiths. The Antichrist B system is in full control, and it won't be any day now. Any day now. We're going to be raptured out of here, saints. But I'm not at liberty to really say what needs to be said. The Lord will not let me say that. But instead of getting hung up with these people, get hung up on this Halloween, uh, it's really the church buildings of today, which is religion. There and that is where Satan does his work. So let's move on. Oh, yeah, let me say this. Now, this church, I'm going to go back this church here where this man and woman, they call it Glad Tidings Church. Their church operation is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Let's move on. You know, I just got another thought. It's almost like, hey, we're going to distract you. Look over here. Ooh, bad day, bad day. We 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 got Anton LaVey. We got him. We got him on this day. Halloween, evil, evil. But come to our church. I'll, I'll leave it there. All right. Now, regarding the video, if you watch the video, here are my comments. 
First of all, the apostles and Jesus Christ never spent months fighting with demons. This David Bryan and his disturbing wife proudly proclaimed they battled this, these demons, plural, for ten and a half months nonstop to deliver one woman. Do you see a problem with this? Jesus Christ, they never spent months. They immediately, by the command of their voice, the demons fled. David Bryan's wife, <clears throat> she's proudly in her sickening, pious self-righteousness, and she's insinuating that her famous grandfather was none other than the heretic A.A. A. Allen. Now, when she said A.A. A. Allen, the hair on the back of my neck stood up because I went, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, who, I, that, wait a minute. That's one of those charismatic freaks that makes Earl Roberts look like a choir boy. So let's talk a little bit about A.A. A. Allen. This Brian, <clears throat> Brian's wife, you know, she's saying, my, my grandfather was A.A. A. Allen. Well, maybe this might shed some light on who David Bryan's wife is, what she's all about, especially when she lifts him up as this great man. First of all, A.A. <clears throat> a. Allen was a charlatan, hireling. Look up those definitions if you don't know what that means. A fake faith healer snake oil salesman, verify this for yourself. Now, if you can stand to watch this pathetic, fake healing of a deformed child named Monkey Boy, and it was hard for me to watch. Here's the link. It's Monkey Boy Healing. Now, this A.A. A. Allen back in the 50s, I think this is the late 60s, early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, he's handling this teeny little boy who's deformed and, and does have a distorted face and he's just loving on Alan, holding him and his little legs are all twisted. And this A.A. A. Allen is flipping around this little boy's feet. You can see he's double, triple jointed. He's deformed and he's like, I'm healing it. He doesn't say I'm healing him. So I'm doing it. Name it. Uh, Jesus. He, in his magazine, he has many preposterous, shocking claims. And here's one I just picked out. This massively morbid, obese, poor woman. She, But you never see the after. But you just see her. She claims that she miraculously, by miracle, insinuating that A.A. A. Allen healed her, lost 200 pounds. Now, A.A. A. Allen's buddy partner in crime was the Schombach. And if you know anything about Schombach's foundation in his mission and extending the legacy, you've got to study R.W. Schombach for soul winning and missions and ultimately an extension of the Jesus legacy confirms the connection to A.A. A. Allen. And A.A. A. Allen uses it as a credential for their ministry. Now, this Schombach, he apprenticed alongside of Allen. And this miracle evangelist of the 40s and 50s, and I think even up to the early 60s, I think, okay, the, the, they served together is an event that's like two partners in crime read this study now let's talk about alan's very untimely young death it says here alan died tragically at the age of 59 after a heavy drinking binge what let's repeat that after a heavy drinking binge they said that his blood alcohol reading the coroner said was enough to ensure a deep coma now of course, all of Alan's little sheeple, his ministers of darkness, they all came about and tried to close ranks 
and say it was just a cover up. They uh, one, it was so ridiculous. I read that one someone wrote, "Oh no, they came in and the conspiracy. Uh, it's conspiracy. No, they came in and someone stuck needles in his arm and shot alcohol in his blood." You can't make this up. They said they have to that he was one of God's chosen. So, but there's too many other accounts here. It says here he died at the Jack Tar Hotel. Sounds like a real five-star hotel to me in San Francisco on June 11th, 1970 at the age of 59. Some claim that Allen died an alcoholic because the coroner's, coroner's report concluded that Allen died from liver failure brought on by acute alcoholism. Others know that he had battled with excruciating pain with severe arthritis in his knees for over a year. And some said, oh, he just took medi drank for medicinal purposes. Okay. And then supposedly Alan said, although I do not claim to possess the gift of healing, huh, interesting, hundreds are being miraculously healed in this meeting of every known disease. Okay. Liar. And this is a quote from The Voice of Healing, and that was his magazine, and this is a May 1950 edition. And he says, I do not claim to possess a single gift of the Spirit, nor to have the power to impart any gifts to others. Yet, in this meeting, as well in other recent meetings, all the gifts of the Spirit are being received and exercised night after night. Liar, liar, liar. Troubles along the way. A.A. A. Allen considered himself the most persecuted preacher in the world. Even the Assemblies of God were not happy with his apparently questionable or at least exaggerated claims. His readiness to publicly counterattack his accusers brought a continual stream of criticism and alienation from mainline Pentecostals. Now, having come out of that assembly of God, the new apostolic reformation movement, having come out of that, delivered from that, thank God, I can tell you that if you have the assembly of God organization and Pentecostals say you're too radical, you really got a problem. So the accusation that he drank abusively was the straw that broke the camel's back. So in the fall of 1955, he was arrested for drunken driving while conducting a revival. Wow. A, while he was conducting a revival in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, I'm 68 years old. I was born in 54, grew up in the 60s and 70s. Believe me. I saw people, relatives, and, and other incidents where people, it was very liberal. It was nothing for people to have a couple, three, four, five, six, eight drinks, cocktails, swerve in the road, and have the constable, the police, or pull one over for a courtesy check. Hey, you all right? You want to follow me home? So for him to be actually arrested for drunken driving in the 1950s. Let me add something here for those of you who are kind of figuring this out. He, now it didn't say pulled over and ticketed, but it says arrested. So in the 1950s, it must have been, he must have been knocked out drunk. I mean, like driving over people's mailboxes and ended up in people's front yards. So when this happened, the uh, press exposed him as a beleaguered minister forfeited his bail rather than stand on the charge. So he even forfeited his bail. So moving on here, we see that his miracle magazine was just something that over and over again exposed him. Now, let's continue. So, so here's David Bryan's wife. Now, how, what, she's either an extraordinarily whacked out 
pathetic, feeble-minded woman to think that her grandfather was this great man of God, or I think what the truth is, she knows that her followers are so stupid, they're going to lift their hands up and say, praise the Lord, sister, what a great, great, your grandpa was a great man of God. He did miracles. Next, let's go on. So David Bryan and his wife, they literally are lifting up and referencing Banny Hen as a prophet. They lift up Banny Hen as a prophet. I'm not making this up. I stopped the video and I went back and listened to it again. Now, people, Benny Hen, <clears throat> he is not a prophet or a man of God, but rather Satan. I, when I was in the New Apostolic Reformation movement, when I belonged to the Assemblies of God organizations, I was in the Azusa Revival in the Convention Center, Los Angeles, and I saw up close, up on stage there, I was on the front, Benny Hinn in full action. And what I saw with my own eyes and witnessed was beyond shocking. It was beyond, I can't describe how evil, how twisted, and how shameful I am and sad I am that I even participated in that because I thought that man had God's anointing. But that night was the beginning of me waking up when I saw the fake people, when, when his people would come down and push people down on the floor, people rolling down on the floor and flipping and flopping like wild savage animals under the Kundalini spirit. And I had this cold, horrible feeling when Benny Hinn was screaming in his microphone that if anyone dare take one more step, the Holy Spirit would strike him dead. I said, oh, my dear Lord, something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. And that's when the Lord started leading me out of that. Now, I want to say this again. <clears throat> this woman, this wife of David Bryant is lifting up. Benny Hinn. This couple also made multiple claims of the Holy Spirit, saying, the Holy Spirit told me this, the Holy Spirit told me that. But know this, the Holy Spirit will never speak what God's word does not speak or say. The smoking gun evidence here. This David Bryan quotes Ecclesiastes 12. And the silver cord reference. When he was in the video, I went, what in the world? I mean, I know Ecclesiastes would not say that. I stopped the video. I went to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6. And I have it right here. I'm going to skip down a couple more, but I'll talk to you about that later. They're using perverted Bible translations. He literally quoted a gross misinterpretation of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6. He took the misquote and then again twisted the misquote and used it in a totally, completely out-of-context reference to taking out Satan's minions on this earth. I was shocked. Then David Bryan's wife, she's, she tells God, hey, you're, hey, God, I'm going to command you. You go tell my husband before I do anything. Are you listening to me when you're listening to this video? Do you see anything wrong with this? If you don't, I pray for you. Next, let's move on. David Bryan's wife frequently says the Holy Spirit told her, and he said this, and he then he tells me this, and she insinuates strongly that she was receiving audible, that means speaking out loud like someone talking to you, commands like, hey, hey, go over here. Do this, do, do, do. That is very, very, very questionable. The Holy Spirit speaks in a still, small voice, and it's not audible. He comes in with our thoughts. 
So this David Bryant, so he's saying, going back to the, he's saying, you know, cut your cord, the, the silver cords. Now, if you go to the video and read Ecclesiastes 12, 6, you see that he took this completely out of its biblical context. <clears throat> David Bryan, he said that the church of Satan never, after his intervention and his little wifey poo's intervention, they never recovered after this. This is a lie from hell. I mean, I don't think the man really thinks that anyone really listens to what he says or certainly has transcripts of what he says. Don't take my word for it. Watch the video. Pull down the transcript. You'll see it for yourself. Do you see a problem here? Again, they made it point over and over again. Like, look at us. We're laboring in the Lord's work. They said it's not easy and it's not fast. This deliverance of someone that was filled with mountains of demons, they said, man, it wasn't easy. It wasn't fast. It took work. It took time, 10 and a half months. People, did Jesus Christ or the apostles go through a very long, painful, difficult task to cast out demons? Let me help you with the answer. No is the answer. The answer is no, they did not. Now, this was quite interesting. David Bryan's wife proclaims heaven and earth intersect. Now, if this doesn't strike an alarm, a terrible alarm in your mind, in your spirit, then I pray for you. Go do your research immediately, spiritually. The Spirit of God said, whoa, right there, there you go. Heaven and earth meet, and the intersection of heaven and earth meeting. This is Eastern mysticism, Gnosticism. It's Luciferian and its entire work. Don't take my word for it. Reference right here. Study on it. There's 20, 30 links on it. If you really want to get into heaven and earth intersect, you could spend a week, fill up five volumes of work, and be find yourself shocked and appalled that this woman, whom I, I'm not at liberty to call her out for what she is, this wife of David Bryan, but I know what she is. I'm not at liberty to say it. For her to say this is the proof that God looks down from heaven and laughs. They expose themselves. I'm not going to read the additional postings I have on the Church of Glad Tidings. It's all in here, the quotes on them. I do want to, however, add emphasis on my notes. Read while Bible translations really do matter. Read while you must understand the perverse nature and the unbiblical practice of dominion theology. Read and study for yourself that the gift of prophecy will continue until the rapture, but all other universal gifts such as tongues and miracles have ceased. Make someone, if they say they did miracles here, here, and here, show them. Ask them. Take and test the spirits. Test the prophets. Say, I want to see your evidence. I want to go. You go with me and let's go to the morgue, and I want you to start raising bodies from the dead. Now, they won't do it. When I was in the Azusa Revival in the Los Angeles Coliseum in 2006, this moron, freak, reprobate, evil demon stood up in the speaker after Oral Roberts had talked, and you had Kenneth Copeland there, and he said, we got, we got, we got, and he had that little twang in his voice, the Lord moved. Uh, he said there were hundreds of wheelchairs being loaded up because people threw them away. They don't need the wheelchair after the Kenneth Copeland or one of the great apostles made a move with his hand. Well, this is after I was really getting wake up calls. See, the Lord allowed me to see this and to really start waking up. I said, I told someone with me, I said, we got it. I want to verify this. So we talked to one of the ushers. Now these ushers are just, they're wearing their little monkey suits, and the usher said, uh, it's over there, I think. Yeah. So we ran clear down on the other side of the convention, 
And now the Los Angeles convention, the main convention center is there's hundreds of little venues. So we were in the main center. So we were told, wait a minute, when we were running everywhere, running ourselves ragged, one of the quote facilitators said, no, no, no. They're talking about, they were supposed to have that in the Los Angeles Coliseum where they held the 70, whatever it was, 76 Olympics. That's where the miracle happened. They had 60 some thousand people pouring in there. And all of a sudden, I'm like, stuff is not adding up. These fake charismatic churches, they never can provide evidence of their healings and their miracles. Study these links. I want you to study the link, and I rebuke Bill Johnson of Bethel Church. I was having lunch with a Bill Johnson little protege who funds Bill Johnson, who's a wealthy man, very successful, and his face, his jaw tightened up when I told him, you're talking. See, he thought he, he said, oh, you're a Christian. You're, wow, you know a lot about the word of God. Man, I'd love for you to get into our program. I want, I would love for you to look at this business, da, da, da. And the minute he said, I'm with Bethel, if you, I don't know, you said, if you've ever heard of Bethel, I said, Redding, California, Bethel, been there, done it. Uh, I never attended Bethel, but I know Redding, lived in California 15 years, knew all about him. And I said, this is not your day. You're talking to the wrong guy. Not only do I know Bill Johnson and Bethel, I said, I have thousands of documented pieces of evidence. I have a preponderance of evidence, and I will email it to you. I said, run from Bethel. Do you think he did? No. He severed all ties with me immediately. I wasn't invited to lunch anymore. Read about the pre-tribulation rapture of scripture, please. And whoa, whoa, whoa be to those who think the church will go through the tribulation. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. I pray that eyes may be opened and ears hear the truth in these final moments for your glory, for your purpose. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.